Why can't you learn financial management? The pursuit of financial freedom as an ordinary person is to regain the power of choice in one's life. With wealth, there is no need to be tied down or restricted in both actions and thoughts. Having money allows the freedom to choose and do what one desires. However, many people lack the necessary knowledge of investment and financial management, making it challenging to achieve financial freedom. The book, Why Can't You Learn Financial Management, draws from the author's personal experiences, combining entrepreneurial insights, financial experiences, and life lessons to provide readers with the wisdom of investment and financial management. The explanations of many financial concepts are straightforward and practical, making it a down-to-earth and useful book, especially suitable for young beginners. The book is divided into 10 chapters, covering topics such as, why do you need money, basic principles of financial management, attitude towards financial life, personal life vision, and methods of entrepreneurial investment. Let's start by discussing why you need money. Lack of money means a lack of true freedom, which includes not only personal freedom and time freedom but more importantly, freedom of choice. Sometimes, due to a lack of financial resources, we are forced or reluctantly make choices that can be painful. To change this situation, everyone should be determined to become wealthy. We should pursue financial freedom, not necessarily becoming an investment guru like Buffett, but at the very least, having enough wealth to regain control over our life choices. Often, the key driving force for people to make determined changes is not the pursuit of the beautiful but the escape from pain. Therefore, when a person has no retreat, it is easier to fight back and achieve success. Be brave to say, no, to the life you don't want, so that you can get closer to the life you desire. In this part, the author quotes investment guru Charlie Munger, at a certain stage in life, I resolved to become a rich man, not because of a love of money but to pursue the feeling of independence. I like being able to express my thoughts freely without being influenced by others' opinions. It is evident that having a substantial amount of wealth is a worthwhile goal. However, in real life, influenced by social norms and social pressure, people often engage in shopping for the sake of comparison. People spare no effort to showcase that they eat, wear, and use branded items, wanting to present themselves in the best light. However, the truth behind these phenomena is that people are living a life of material accumulation, chasing credit card bills, and being bound by money. Such a life can never help a person achieve financial freedom. The author warns everyone to stay vigilant and not fall into these traps. Undoubtedly, everyone has desires, but these desires can easily lead to greed. People work hard to earn money to satisfy material needs, either to follow trends, out of boredom, or to compare themselves with others. The more one desires, the more one wants, and this is human nature. However, the pursuit of desire is never-ending. To build real wealth, this is where people need to make changes first. Reduce the burden of desires, live within limits, have a clear plan for income and expenses, and practice effective budgeting within one's capabilities. The author recommends learning to keep accounts for three reasons. 1. Through reviewing, understand where your money is spent. 2. Allocate future expenses properly. 3. Each accounting entry helps you move one step forward on the path to financial freedom. Therefore, establishing the right consumption concept and cultivating the habit of budgeting are essential lessons for everyone on the road to wealth. Next, the book emphasizes the importance of financial management. Financial management is a way of life, and a person without financial awareness often only considers the present and lacks long-term planning for life and career. Therefore, when various unexpected events occur in life, they lack the ability to cope and cannot achieve long-term development and success. Financial views are closely related to life views, and managing one's finances is essentially managing one's life. To live an ideal life, one must learn to outline the desired state of life and then plan, create, and execute accordingly. Everyone has different lifestyles and ideal lives, and one should never take someone else's ideals as their own. Grasp the general direction that aligns with your preferences. 
With this direction, you can ensure that everything you do and every decision you make moves towards it. Otherwise, you will only randomly try this and that along the way, and the result will be getting farther and farther away from where you want to go. Once you have a goal, you can plan your finances better. We all know that money is a tool, and it is neutral. When used well, it can help us achieve our ideal life more quickly. Financial management is not just about saving and making money, more importantly, it involves cultivating the ability to create and control passion. It includes various aspects such as debt management, spending control, asset allocation, risk management, goal setting, career planning, and life design. Financial management is about making money work for you through clear management and investment planning to create wealth. Everyone should learn about financial management and investment. The author believes it is essential for people to understand some basic financial knowledge, such as the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets are things that put money in our pockets, while liabilities take money out of our pockets. The focus should be on creating wealth by building assets. Second, the distinction between assets and trading time for money. Assets usually generate income for us even when we are sleeping, while jobs that involve trading time for money lead to a loss of income when we stop working. Therefore, actively building assets and breaking free from the rat race is essential. Third, the difference between investment and financial management. These are two different concepts. Investment involves making a profit using a platform, using money to earn more money. Financial management is a way of managing funds, organizing money reasonably to ensure there is more of it. Investment focuses on returns, requires personal judgment and understanding of market trends, and demands a certain level of expertise. Financial management is a long-term and comprehensive plan for personal or family wealth, using various investment products as a portfolio to diversify risks and achieve target returns. The author suggests that for investments, one should use spare money. This way, even if there are short-term losses, it won't affect normal life, allowing for a calm and sustained investment for long-term returns. The book also introduces various financial products on the market, including bonds, index funds, stocks, and more. The author believes that for most ordinary people, investing in index funds through regular contributions, dollar cost averaging, is the best investment strategy. Although the return on this investment may not be high, its low transaction costs and stable returns make it a very suitable option for those with low risk tolerance, little investment experience, and knowledge. The author also emphasizes the importance of long term holding of index funds. Many people focus on returns but underestimate risk management. Frequent buying and selling are speculative behaviors, not much different from gambling. Therefore, excessive and frequent trading should be avoided. Instead, buying three to five funds and holding them for the long term, adhering to a minimalist and efficient approach, is the best principle for investment and financial management. Only through long-term holding can compound interest unleash its powerful effects over the entire process. This means that we don't need to make significant progress every day, we just need to make a small, consistent improvement each day. Our wealth and life will be significantly different in the long run. Finally, the author summarizes five financial blind spots that should be avoided as much as possible. 1. Getting the savings order wrong. Some people think about saving money only after spending, but the correct approach is to plan the savings amount first and then allocate the remaining income to other expenses. 2. Always saying, it's okay if I run out of money, I can earn more, the author believes that most people's money is earned through time, and everyone's earning time is limited. Therefore, money is not always guaranteed to come in again. 3. Never budgeting. Budgeting is an essential factor in building wealth. Without a budget, it's challenging to understand one's income and expenses and ensure that every penny has a reasonable purpose. For desperately saving money but not understanding how to spend it, simply saving money without understanding how to invest and make money work for you is an essential reason why people can't get rich. 5. 
treating others' short-term returns as one's long-term profits, sudden windfalls for others might be based on luck and not replicable. It's crucial not to subjectively consider them as long-term profits. To achieve long-term returns, one should continuously learn financial knowledge and actively practice. Congratulations on finishing another book. Keep it up.